Recently, several short videos showing an endless line of police cars were recorded parking outside the marketplace, and especially a giant unknown creature wandering around a shopping center in Miami, USA. People at the scene who saw the mystical creature were trembling in fear, and people even heard gunfire in the shopping center. People in the mall later prayed for God's aid. What is that strange creature? Where did the strange creature come from? Is the end of humanity closer than ever? Will Lord Jesus come to save humanity? I invite you to watch the video until the end to understand what did the people in Miami see and what is the meaning of the event. In the vibrant heart of Miami, the bustling shopping malls are alive with the rhythmic pulse of commerce. People move seamlessly through the vibrant corridors. Their energy mirrored in the array of designer boutiques and eclectic stores. Shoppers, adorned in the latest fashion trends, navigate the labyrinth of shops with purpose and enthusiasm. Laughter and conversation weave through the air. As friends explored the latest releases or families perused the myriad of options. From high-end luxury brands to quirky local boutiques, the shopping experience is a kaleidoscope of tastes and preferences, reflecting the diverse and dynamic spirit of Miami's fashion-forward community. However, a paranormal event has happened at Bayside Mall in Miami, United States. An unknown creature suddenly showed its appearance in the shopping center. The said creature was told that it was at least 8 to 10 feet tall in height, and it was covered by shadow cloak. The creature made people in the scene freeze in terror, and they could not do anything other than run away as far as they could. A few minutes later, the police were mobilized to the shopping center. An endless line of police cars parking outside the mall showing the seriousness of the anomaly. People inside the mall were investigated by the police for hours and checked if they recorded anything about the mysterious creature. Only those who have not recorded a single clip are allowed to go to their home. Not long after police showed their appearance at the shopping center, people living near the area said that they heard gunfires inside the center. Some people indicate that the police were fighting with the abnormal creature at that time. Fortunately, no serious damage was recorded on the police forces, and the unknown creature fled after. People at the mall, after readjusting their emotions and reducing the frightness, remembering that there was also a portal which the creature came out from. People were so scared that instead of recording unusual things as normal, they fled. It's like their instinct said that they must flee. Otherwise, terrible things will happen to them. It means that although they saw both the portal and the shadowy creature, people have no proof or evidence, but only their memories. Later, some people claim that this strange creature is the descendant of the Nephilim, which is an offspring between fallen angel, symbol of chaos and destruction, and female human. While the others are still confused if this is the descendant of the Nephilim, or a random unknown monster from hell, about the mystery portal, Religious people are referring to the portal to the gates of hell in the Bible. You know that the main gate of hell won't open, but when it is there will be chaos and suffering. And you know what? There's a case that is close to the incident in Miami. But the difference about this case is people in that place open the gate of hell intentionally. Every year in Cambodia, the gates of hell open for 15 days. The spirits of the dead come out, and they're hungry. During this festival called Shum Ben, Cambodians offer the spirit sticky rice and fruit to satiate them. One morning, I joined some locals at a pagoda in Bottom Bang, a small city 250 kilometers northwest of Phan Pen. Dead spirits do not like sunlight, so the ceremony to feed them takes place before dawn. It's 4.30 and when Untak meets me at my house. He shakes his head at the oranges and mangosteens I bought. Everyone knows spirits can't peel fruit. Fortunately, monks can so they will be able to take my offering. We bike to the pagoda, the air cool and heavy around us. When we arrive, Untok buys two plates of sticky rice, the rice arranged around a candle in the middle of each plate. Now we fit into the crowd, all wearing white shirts and holding a plate of rice. Untuck explains that spirits are sent to the bad place based on the state in which they die. If a person dies while they are angry or suffering, they go to hell. This belief makes the crimes of the Khmer Rouge only a few decades removed. Even more, he death does not provide relief for their victims, whose suffering passes from this life to the next. We kneel in front of the temple to listen to the monks' chants, broadcast to us through loudspeakers. And then we rise to circle the temple silently. Candles glow on everyone's faces, making it feel like a vigil. We stop periodically to place balls of rice into large dishes. And after three trips around the temple, 
Our rice is gone. People leave to go home and make a large meal with their families. Free from family obligations, untack, and I instead go to the abandoned airport to sit on the tarmac and watch the sun make its slow ascent. We didn't give our fruit to the monks, but Untak shrugs us off. He doesn't think much of the monks at that pagoda, who stayed hidden in the temple for the entire ceremony, where we began the morning feeding dead spirits. We end it feeding live ones. We toss orange peels beside us and bite into the orange's flesh. We break into the purple shells of the mango steens and discard the ones that have gone bad alongside the orange peels. As we hop onto our bikes and cycle away, I wonder if any of the dead spirits have braved the daylight to pick through the orange peels in search of the discarded mangosteens. They may be overripe, but I'm not sure how particular the spirits are. After all, in a few days the gates of hell will close, and it will be another year before the spirits' descendants will kneel at a pagoda offering them rice, candles dimly illuminating the scene. That is one minor gate of hell, which people in the area can control. But the major gate is a completely different thing. It will open by itself, and when it does, it's also a sign of the end time has started. Will our Lord Jesus save us from those creatures from hell whose instinct is harming people and make the world astray? The answer is already there in your heart, Christian. He will always be there and help us to overcome fear and lead us to the righteous path. The end time. To get a realistic idea of the end times, we must go to the teaching of Jesus. He told us in Matthew 5, 5, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Though frequently repeated, this section from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount is rarely comprehended. The meek are individuals who are not violent, egotistical, or greedy, and who exhibit the fruits of the Spirit, such as kindness, humility, understanding, and love toward their neighbor. These people have healthy souls and will receive new bodies similar to those of the heavenly man upon the death of their earthly bodies. 1 Corinthians 15 4252 Since those bodies will be immortal and not require reproduction, they will be ideal and neither male nor female. The souls of all others will be destroyed in hellfire, so that not even a memory of them will remain. Matthew 10.28 They are the arrogant, the greedy, the violent, and all those who have denied God and the teaching of Jesus. So in the final days of our times, the meek still on earth will be taken. In Matthew 24.39.40 That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken, and the other left. Two women will be grinding with a handmill. One will be taken, and the other left. Those taken will be given their new heavenly bodies and transferred to another dimension to be with all those who preceded them. We are told that a barrier exists that prevents anyone crossing from one dimension to the other. In the final days, all those left on earth and all man-made structures will be destroyed, and God will create a new world where all will be aware of his presence and his love. Then the barrier between those in heaven and those on earth will be removed so that those who had healthy souls and were given a new heavenly body, the meek will return to inherit God's new earth. It's in Psalm 37, 1 to 11 for evil men will be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land a little while and the wicked will be no more. Though you look for them, they will not be found but the meek will inherit the land and enjoy great peace. In Psalm 37, 29, the righteous will possess the earth and they will live forever on it. Let's prepare for end time. Here's a prophecy from the Bible about what the world will look like shortly before the return of Christ. As you read through it, try thinking about what you need in order to survive it. I looked when he opened the sixth seal and behold, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as a sackcloth of hair and the moon became like blood and the stars of heaven fell to the earth, as a fig tree drops its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Then the sky receded as a scroll when it was rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man, hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come. And who is able to stand? Revelation 6, 12, 17. It won't be enough even if you've gathered enough ammunition and weapons to repel the standing army of a small nation, constructed a bunker strong enough to survive a nuclear holocaust, and accumulated enough survival food to fill an Olympic-sized swimming pool. When the great day of his wrath is come, when the earth shakes the mountains and the islands out of place, 
when stars fall from heaven and the sky recedes like a scroll, when kings and slaves alike cower in fear at the judgment God is raining down on a corrupt earth, all the physical preparation in the world won't make an ounce of difference. Being prepared for the end times doesn't require exactly predicting the end times. Paul warned that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. 1 Thessalonians 5, 2 English Standard Version We should certainly be aware that the day of the Lord is coming, and its sudden arrival shouldn't catch us off guard. 1 Peter 5 1 5 But Jesus himself told his disciples to stay alert, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. Matthew 24, 42 and 2 Be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Verse 44 Just like putting together a disaster supply kit, it's important to prepare before things get bad. And just as you can refer to a checklist to assemble your own kit, you can also refer to the spiritual checklist God has provided in order to prepare for these big end time events. He has shown you, O oh man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justly, or to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Micah 6.8, that's a short checklist, but it takes a lot of time to tick those boxes. You can put a disaster supply kit together in an afternoon, but doing justice, loving mercy, and walking humbly are character attributes that we can spend the rest of our lives refining and perfect. God doesn't expect us to have perfected these attributes before the end time events unfold. He just expects us to be diligently working on them. Every day gives us new opportunities to be doing just that. But the story doesn't end there. When God the Father and Jesus Christ set their plan in motion, they were not willing that any should perish. 2 Peter 3 9 In the aftermath of the end-time events, the world's survivors will need leadership, compassion, and guidance. We will have the privilege of providing all those things as we reign with Christ for a thousand years. Revelation 20, for teaching the rest of humanity to build their own spiritual survival kits, to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God. And one day, when the dead, small and great, verse 12, are returned to life and brought before God. We'll be there too, offering a hope for survival that stretches on into eternity. We prepare for the end times not so much so that we can physically endure it, but rather so that we may look forward to an amazing future that lies beyond it. Furthermore, there shall be no more death, sorrow, or crying in that glorious future. According to Revelation 21.4, there shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. That's something worth preparing for. The second coming is happening. Jesus' return is imminent. On the other hand, nobody can predict with certainty when Jesus, according to Mark 13, 32, but about that day or hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Interestingly, the disciples asked Jesus the same question, just before he returned to heaven. At that time, Jesus told them it was not for them to know the times or seasons which are in the Father's authority. Therefore, Jesus may come back tomorrow, next month, next year, or 100 years from now. So what does this mean for you and me? Just always be ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Watch and focus on Jesus, because the devil is seeking to distract mankind from understanding the signs and closeness of Jesus' coming. Jesus is giving humanity as much time as possible to make a decision and follow him. Thus, he is patiently waiting to return. Jesus desires for as many people to turn from their sins and follow him back into heaven. But dear one, remember this. With the Lord, a day is equal to a thousand years, and a thousand years are equal to one day. In 2 Peter 3, 8, 9, instead of being lax about his promise, as some people think, the Lord is long-suffering toward us and wants everyone to come to repentance rather than perish. What will happen before Christ comes? Of all the events leading up to the second coming, Two are more precise than the others. The appearance of the man of lawlessness, see 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, and the cosmic events described in Matthew 24, 29, 30. 5. Jesus describes the cosmic events like this. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then will appear in heaven the sign of the Son of Man and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Matthew 24, 29-30, we have no warrant to be sure that Christ's coming is ever more than a few years away. I understand these cosmic events as real cosmological events, 
Just as the coming of Christ is a real birth, bodily, spatial, visible, audible event, with the incarnation of Jesus Christ in literal flesh and blood, and with the resurrection in a body that ate fish and showed wounds, and with the ascension of that body on literal clouds, and with the promise of the coming of that glorious body to a we should be slow to treat the signs accompanying the second coming as metaphorical. Jesus and the apostles give no hint that they are not describing cosmological reality. From the way Jesus describes the events of Matthew 24 to 29 to 30, it seems that they happen in immediate conjunction with the appearance of Christ. These signs do not appear to happen far enough in advance of his coming that they could be used to calculate his near arrival. They happen at his coming. I do not know what a darkened sun will be like, how dark, or a moon not shining, eclipse, or stars falling, disappearing, or meteorites, or the heavens shaken, with thunder. I do not know what the sign of the Son of Man is, but it seems to be virtually simultaneous with Christ's appearance. Thus, the timing of the end is not revealed by these cosmic events. They inform us that it has arrived. As Jesus states in Matthew 24, 27, as the lightning comes from the east and shines as far as the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. The cosmic displays will herald his arrival like lightning. What happens when our Lord return? When Jesus Christ comes again to the earth, he will do the following things. He will cleanse the earth. When Jesus comes again, he will come in power and great glory. At that time, the wicked will be destroyed. All things that are corrupt will be burned, and the earth will be cleansed by fire. He will judge his people. When Jesus comes again, he will judge the nations and will divide the righteous from the wicked. See Matthew 25:31 to 46. See also chapter 46 in this book. I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. The wicked he saw lived not again until the thousand years were finished. See Revelation 24, 5. He will usher in the millennium. The millennium is the thousand-year period when Jesus will reign on the earth. The righteous will be caught up to meet Jesus at his coming. His coming will begin the millennial reign. President Brigham Young said, In the millennium, when the kingdom of God is established on the earth in power, glory, and perfection, and the reign of wickedness that has so long prevailed is subdued, the saints of God will have the privilege of building their temples and of entering into them, becoming, as it were, pillars in the temples of God. See Revelation 3, 12, and they will officiate for their dead. Then we will see our friends come up, and perhaps some that we have been acquainted with here. And we will have revelations to know our forefathers, clear back to Father Adam and Mother Eve. And we will enter into the temples of God and officiate for them. Then children will be sealed to parents until the chain is made perfect back to Adam, so that there will be a perfect chain of priesthood from Adam to the winding up scene. Teachings of Presidents of the Church, Brigham Young, 1997, 333 4. He will complete the first resurrection. Those who have obtained the privilege of coming forth in the resurrection of the just will rise from their graves. They will be caught up to meet the Savior as he comes down from heaven. See EC 88. 9798. After Jesus Christ rose from the dead, other righteous people who had died were also resurrected. They appeared in Jerusalem and also on the American continent. See Matthew 27, 52 to 53, 3 Nephi 23, 9 to 10. This was the beginning of the first resurrection. Some people have been resurrected since then. Those who already have been resurrected and those who will be resurrected at the time of his coming will all inherit the glory of the celestial kingdom. C to C 7 650 70. After the resurrection of those who will inherit celestial glory, another group will be resurrected. Those who will receive terrestrial glory. When all these people have been resurrected, the first resurrection will be completed. The wicked who are living at the time of the second coming of the Lord will be destroyed in the flesh. They, along with the wicked who are already dead, We'll have to wait until the last resurrection. All of the remaining dead will rise to meet God. They will either inherit the telestial kingdom or be cast into outer darkness with Satan. CDC 76, 32, 33, and 81, 112. He will reclaim the throne that is rightfully. Jesus will create his earthly government when he returns. That kingdom will include the church for a millennium. He will reign in peace over all the people on the planet. When Jesus Christ first came to the earth, he did not come in glory. 
He was born in a lowly stable and laid in a manger of hay. He did not come with great armies as the Jews had expected of their Savior. Instead, he came saying, Love your enemies, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you. Matthew 5, 44. He was rejected and crucified, but he will not be rejected at his second coming. For every ear shall hear it, and every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is the Christ. C88, 104. He will be greeted as Lord of Lords and King of Kings, Revelation 17, 14. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, Isaiah 9, 6. Prepare for Lord's return by meditation. Learning to be more conscious has several advantages for you. It can support your ability to be aware of and focused on your surroundings. Through the practice of sitting with distracting thoughts, acknowledging them, and allowing them to pass mindfulness meditation in particular, swing can help improve mindfulness and lower stress levels. If meditation isn't working for you, you can still employ mindfulness to become more aware of things throughout the day. Here's how. Focus on sensations. Use your five senses to fully tune into the experiences of everyday life. No matter how mundane they may seem, focus on your breath. If you start to feel overwhelmed, deliberately slowing your breathing can help you stabilize yourself and return to the present. Inhale slowly. Hold your breath for a few seconds and then exhale again. Fully opening your mind to what you can learn from a given situation can help you maintain your focus. When feelings come up, consider what caused them and why. Find the source of the distracting thought if you find yourself focusing on it. Occasionally, you could notice that your mind is always wandering. Try not to be too hard on yourself for not being mindful enough. This is natural. Simply return your attention to the subject you wish to concentrate on instead. Learning this technique could take some time, but with time, your mind will adjust to being in the present moment. Words to help us brace our faith and strength. The Lord is my strength and my song, and He has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise Him my Father's God, and I will exalt him. Exodus 15 to Heavenly Father, I come to you today in humility and gratitude, recognizing your mighty power and boundless love. You are the source of my strength and my salvation. In moments of weakness, I find solace in your unwavering presence, knowing that you are always by my side. Lord, please grant me the strength to face the challenges that lie ahead. As you led your people out of Egypt and delivered them from the hands of their oppressors, I trust that you will guide me through my trials with your strong and gentle hand. When I am uncertain or afraid, help me remember that you are my rock and my fortress and that I can lean on you for support. Father, I pray that my faith may grow as I rely on your strength to carry me through. Teach me to embrace the challenges of life, knowing that they are opportunities for growth and transformation. May I find joy in the midst of struggle and peace in the midst of turmoil. Thank you, Lord for the gift of your strength and the promise of your protection. I pray that I may be a shining example of your love and grace to those around me. Help me to be a light in the darkness as I walk in the path of righteousness that you have set before me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for the upcoming videos. Be easy.